The Champagne region is in eastern France. It covers an area of around 35,000 hectares, spread across 319 villages. Though wine has been produced here since the 3rd century, it was only in the late 17th century that Champagne became the wine it is today. The climate, soil, subsoil and topography create a specific terroir, which gives the wines unique characteristics. The subsoil is limestone, predominantly chalk, providing the vines with a steady supply of water. This is a harsh climate for vines. Subject to both oceanic and continental influences, it offers regular rainfall throughout the year. Ideal sunshine in summer, but severe frosts, feared by growers in winter and spring. The Champagne terroir is undulating, with vineyards planted on hillsides. With just seven authorised grape varieties, the three most commonly cultivated are Pinot Noir, Meunier and Chardonnay. In order to fully exploit the harsh climatic conditions, Champagne growers have developed a specific know-how passed down through generations. In the vineyards, a series of seasonal tasks have to be undertaken. Pruning regulates the vigour and fertility of the vines. In Champagne, there are four authorised pruning techniques, which are strictly regulated. Tying up involves attaching the canes to training wires in order to keep vine growth under control. Desuckering consists of removing non fruit bearing shoots. Once the training wires have been raised, the vines are trellised to provide maximum ventilation and exposure to sunlight. Finally, the vines are pinched back several times before the harvest to stop them producing too much foliage and too little fruit. In the never-ending pursuit of excellence, champagne growers are committed to a rigorous, sustainable development policy respecting landscapes and biodiversity, managing water responsibly, and reducing their carbon footprint. It's harvest time. Around 100,000 pickers are busy in the vineyards. The ripening of the grapes is carefully monitored. For every village and every variety, the date of the harvest is set when the grapes reach optimum ripeness. The grapes are picked exclusively by hand and swiftly transported to pressing centres. Similar to harvest yields, pressing yields are regulated. The production of white wine with black-skinned grapes that comprise two-thirds of the harvest requires gentle, incremental pressing, a technique invented by champagne producers more than three centuries ago. The juice is ready for the first stage of winemaking, alcoholic fermentation, which transforms the grape juice into wine. After several months of resting, the base wines are ready for blending. Mm -hmm. 
Blending is a crucial stage in champagne production. By combining still wines produced from different vintages, varieties and vineyards, cellar masters transcend the individual qualities of each to produce a unique cuvée, which expresses and perpetuates their particular vision and style. Once the wines are blended, they're bottled and aged in cellars for a minimum of 15 months. During the first few weeks, thanks to the sugar and yeasts added during bottling, a second fermentation takes place. This process is known as prise de mousse, literally capturing the sparkle, in which the wine develops new aromas and begins to form bubbles. Then the wine is left to slowly mature in the cool champagne cellars. After aging, the leaves that are formed in the bottles must be removed. Riddling, whether by hand or automated, draws the sediment into the neck of the bottle, where it is expelled by a mechanical or manual process known as disgorgement. The finishing touch is dosage, the addition of a small amount of sugar diluted in the wine to determine the style of the champagne. Extra brute, brute, sec, demi sec, etc. Sealed with a cork, wire cage, and foil cap, then labeled, the bottle of champagne is ready to embark on a new journey. Champagne is a wine in its own right. Though the Champagne appellation is unique, the diversity of blends means there is a Champagne to suit every occasion and type of cuisine.